What's built on the 14 nanometer process is totally geared towards gamers and enthusiasts. And as the latest thing from Intel, I'll tell you what, Skylake. Yesterday, Intel has once again pushed the envelope of technology and their brand new sixth generation of Intel's core processing family CPUs, codenamed Skylake, have hit the shelves, offering a couple of new SKUs to an eager crowd. Intel introduced right off the bat two brand new SKUs. If you guys don't know what SKUs are, that's their CPU nomenclature stuff. One is an i5. This is a 6600K offering 3.5 base clock, 3.9 turbo boost, and other things that are totally geared for the overclocker. The big news, however, is the brand new i7-6700K. Now, this bad boy is top of the line and even has Intel 530 graphics embedded into it. Right out of the box, the 6700K is at 4.0 gigahertz. That's right, right out of the box and offers unprecedented things never seen before in a CPU for the overclocker. On this screen right here though, you can see how the overclocking parameters have been totally fleshed out. And like I said, there are also overclocking additions via the DDR4 memory, which now has finer grain increments allowing more precise stepping as well as DDR ratio overdrive capabilities. A question I know that's going to come up, people are going to go, hey, okay, these things are great for gaming, but what will they do for productivity? Well, obviously, if they're going to game good, they're still going to be good for productivity. They're not going to be as good as the X99 chipset if you go out and get yourself a Xeon platform, but this thing's going to be something that you can game on and still do all your work. I mean, most people aren't at home, you know, rendering their 3D games out of their living room. If they are, they usually have a much higher end systems. These systems are pretty much for the gamer. The enthusiast, the guy who watches movies, plays games, does all that stuff, but it still has those features that'll make it good for doing your productivity. So if you're editing stuff in Photoshop, you're making movies and all that kind of stuff, this thing's going to do great for you. Now, I know another question people are going to ask, well, I'm, uh, I want to upgrade, but what do I got to do? All right, well, if you have an old CPU cooler, good news there because all of the CPU coolers that fit the 1150 are gonna fit this absolutely no problem. So you're gonna also have to buy a new motherboard because with these new CPUs, like I said, comes a brand new chipset. That's right, the Z170 has hit the market. It's a brand new motherboard. It's really fleshed out. Basically, it's just more of everything much more PCIe support, much more support for the USB 3.0, just, you know, that's pretty much what it is. And it also works with this new CPU, is going to be much better for DDR4 and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about that. The big thing that Intel is pushing about these new Z170 motherboards is their ability to have 40% more high-speed IO lanes. That means, like I said, more USB 3.0, more PCIe lanes. Intel's rapid storage technology also gets a boost. With Intel's latest PCI Express storage support, the Z710 will be able to handle mass amounts of data transfer without hindrance. Intel also offers the following kind of comparison. They're saying that if you have a year old system, you're basically going to get 10% better performance by this platform. With a two year old system, 20% better. And if you have a three year old system, 30% better performance. Now, these numbers should be taken with a grain of salt, but that's pretty much a roundabout way of saying, hey, here's an easy way to show you what this can do compared to something before. And with video cards, I have had a tendency to notice that if you buy another video card up, it's usually like 10 frames per second more. So if you buy a 980, you know, it could be 70 frames. If you buy a 980 Ti, it'll be 80 frames. So I guess the 10% thing could kind of fit in there. In the last few months, I've been seeing a lot of comments down below saying, hey man, like when are you gonna like change up your test system? Some of the tests that you're doing, like you're running them on medium settings, that's totally crazy. So this is actually going to be my completely new system for doing all of the gaming tests and the gaming benchmarks. Now I got two motherboards in for this launch. The first board up in the test station is one of the G1 gaming series motherboards. That's right, this is the Z170X Gaming 7 from Gigabyte. Kind of a crazy name. But as you guys can see on the test station, this thing looks really, really incredible. We're still using our custom Swift Tech for all of our cooling. It's a water cooling system. It does pretty decent in overclocking. And you guys can see that we got brand new memory in as well. It's the brand new Vengeance LPX, which is rated at a devilish 2,666. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding around, but that is the number. And this is some very fast DDR4 memory. 
It's a little bit hard to see, but in between the CPU and the first video card slot, we have our little tiny little M2 SATA thing there, and that's what we're using for the boot drive. I've also got another 512 gigabyte SSD. We use that for some stuff, storage. And then last but not least, I have a two terabyte Western Digital Black Drive, which I think is what many people out there use for storing their games on, because it just has, what, mass amounts of storage. It's pretty damn sturdy. And it's fast enough to make your gaming experience still pretty cool. Now, I wish I had the bucks to go ahead and just buy completely SSD and have two terabytes of SSD, but uh, even I ain't that cool yet. The other motherboard that we're gonna be testing as well for you folks is this one right here. This is a badass motherboard. This is the Asus Z170 Deluxe. Now, if you guys know anything about the Deluxe series, I know a lot of people go, oh, I like the ROG series. I'm gonna be honest with you, ROG is cool, but I built so many damn systems that are just black and black and red and black and red, black and red, black and red. I kind of like this board. It has just black and white and it's really easy using a different colored system. Kind of like the one back here behind, which we'll talk about real quick. So anyways, I'm sorry folks that we don't have all the test scores and everything down for this stuff, but like I said, we only got the motherboard yesterday, but I didn't want to let you guys down. So some cool things are about this. Any of you guys who have out there have water cooling equipment, you don't have to worry about going in the new block or anything that. Even with the brand new chipset, it still mounts up, no problems, no additional equipment is needed. That's one cool thing. Obviously, if you want to jump into this brand new chipset, well, then you're going to have to buy a new motherboard. If you don't have DDR4, you're going to have to buy DDR4 memory, and obviously you're going to have to buy the CPU. But if you're somebody who wants the most cutting edge stuff, and you want to really be able to use a lot of video cards on your system without it going, you know, uh, and freaking out, you're going to want to get into this kind of stuff. I know that some of the older chipsets did do pretty well with handling multi-video cards, but if you were doing three and four video cards, you were always pretty much forced to go to an X99 unless you wanted to be bottlenecked. Um, I'm going to try my testing with this, and we'll actually see if this bottlenecks. So I thank you guys for watching. And by the way, I know somebody's going to put a question down. This thing back behind me, this is the Blue Fury. It's finally done. There's still gonna be a little more little custom tiny things, but essentially the entire system is now done. You can see it behind me. It's basically Intel X99 mixed with a couple of Fury Xs inside that bad boy. We'll talk about that another day. For today though, hey, Skylake has arrived. For pricing, availability, and all that kind of stuff, hey, take a look down below. We will have some links, man. I'm Elric, I'll see you back here really soon. I gotta actually do a lot of testing on this stuff. Then I'll bring you guys the numbers and we'll bring you actually the features of each motherboard. Because basically nowadays, every motherboard is only going to be very slightly faster or slower than the other one. So small, it's gonna be almost indistinguishable. The best things about motherboards these days are its features, and if you're an overclocker, how well it overclocks. If you're not an overclocker, well, that probably doesn't matter to you. You're looking for stability only. So hey, thanks a lot. We'll see you guys back here on Tech of Tomorrow for more tech tomorrow.